Hello everybody, this is Roma again from TheLogicalMusician.com and today I'm, I've been wanting to go over um, various plugins every day so every day I'm covering a new plugin and today I want to cover the Bitcrusher plugin Bitcrusher plugin might be interpreted for only using guitar for it's a distortion plugin but like I said before many plugins whether they're not for guitar, bass, or drums really aren't just specified for one particular instrument. The universal, you can use them for many other things. So a distortion can be used in a bass, or in this case, I put a bit crusher distortion on the drums. I wanted um, the drums to have a couple distortion at it at the very end of my song. So just to show you guys really quick and a good example, I pulled up one of my own songs, and I'm just going to let you hear the end of it. Okay, so right now I'll solo it on the second time I play it. But for the first time I play it, I just want you guys to see how I incorporate the bit crushers so it could just it can give me it can give me more of a more spice to my musical phrase. So let's hear how it sounds. If you notice the drums have a cup a little bit of distortion at the end. It's gonna drop right here now. In the last hit you will hear distortion. Listen carefully. It kinda left a um a kind of distorted sound resonating from your speakers like a little bit of crackling and pops. See let me put it on solo mode just so you guys can get a feel of how it really sounds. Now here it comes again. About three more times. Alright. I think I got my point across. Now that we know how the bit crusher is applied and it sounds Let's open and see how we can use this interface. Now, this is what the Bitcrusher plugin looks like. You have a couple functions right here. Let me go through them. You have your drive. What your drive does, it sends your gain to your signal. And it's measured in decibels. And it ranges from all the way to zero decibels to 50 decibels. The higher you go, the more distorted it's going to sound. Because it's your drive. Now your resolution, you have a choice between going between 1-bit and 24-bit recording. The lower you go, the the more distortion and downgraded you're, you're giving your sound. So I put mine at about five, a 5-bit a five recording. Now your downsampling, this is kind of confusing. If you have your downsampling at times 1, it's really not going to do anything. What your downsampling does is that it cuts your sample rate so say if I was going at times 2 and you're recording at a sample rate of 44.1 Hertz it halves the sample rate so if I was recording at 10 it'll it'll reduce my sample rate to 1 tenth so instead of recording at 44.1 I'll be recording at I'll be recording at 4.41 Hertz sorry um, it's just something I learned a while ago and really, just even even though you know what downsampling is, even if you mess with it, it's just going to give you a sound that you would prefer. So if you really don't get what these knobs do, just mess with them. Move them up and down and see how they work. But I'm explaining to you exactly what they are. If you guys don't know what sampling rate is, check my video on sampling rate and my articles on sampling rate on LogicalMusician.com to, to clarify this. It's a very, very important part in recording so be sure to check that out guys and your clip level your clip level decides um, whether you're gonna clip above zero decibels or at negative two point zero decibels I like to keep it at zero zero decibels so it never goes above zero decibels now your mode buttons these these are kinda confusing even confuse me sometimes your mode buttons are your mode buttons are what determine. Let me see. Your your mode buttons are what determine whether your signal peaks 
exceed the clip level that are folded, cut, or displaced. Now you can mess with you can you can try either one of these function functions, sorry, to see which ones serve you right, but the middle one is what I usually use because the middle one is it just pertains to more digitally digitally um distorted sounds. So I usually leave mine on cut. And now you have one less one more option I mean, and that is your mix. And to pull up your mix, you open it by this little tri triangle disclosure button. Open it larger if you want. You probably already knew that, though. And then your mix is basically just controlling your wet and dries. Now, as, as I explained earlier in, an, in another vid, um, your wet and dries are... is basically controlling your uh, your final signal, your your final master signal that your bit crusher is sending to your to your mix so if I go all the way down to zero percent that means I went all the way down to my wet signal so it's gonna give you more signal than ever it's gonna give you all its signal actually it's gonna actually sound very distorted just because I'm using the big crusher if I go all the way up that means I'm putting my signal to 100 percent dry and this will this will reduce most of the of the of the distortion in your in your mix. The lower you go, you're you're adding more wet. The higher you go, you're adding more dry to your signal. It's kind of self-explanatory. But this is really all I have to say on the bit crusher. I hope you guys like this video. I hope it was very informative to you guys. I'm about I'm about to make some more videos right now. Um hope you guys enjoyed this one. Check out my other vids, guys, and don't stop recording. See you guys later. Bye.